Jeff Bro from Two Hacks Garage. Well, as you can see, I've been quite busy at Kyle's. I've been quite busy at Jimmy's. And you know what? I've been getting busy in my garage. Um, I've been doing a, a series on how to disassemble an engine the right way. And when I say the right way, well, that's the way that Jimmy taught me. Um, it's just not all about just getting in there, tearing stuff down. It's about knowing what you're working with, being properly prepared, and taking this apart the right way. So the first video, what you saw, was the identification of this engine and kind of making sure that it's freed up and that it spins. Um, we went through all that. Um, one thing I did want to touch on that, guys, is there is a lot of other date stamps and codes on these engines and parts. I didn't go over every single one. Um, you can do that on your own per your application. What I might do as I do take this apart is actually look at some more numbers in, de in depth as I see them and explain them to you. So what's going to be part two? Well, part two is going to be simple. I kind of already know what I have and with this engine what I don't want. As you saw in the first video, I talked about this having that undesirable heads and I'm performance oriented. So the cylinder heads on this engine are not going to be the ones I'm using along with this two barrel intake manifold and two barrel carburetor. So when I disassemble this, you won't see me taking this off. I'll be taking it off on one chunk because I know I'm not going to use it. I don't want to waste any time. I want to get to the point where I need to be. So in this video, what we're going to do is quite simple. You see a lot of these things on here like breather tube, dipstick, pulleys, engine mounts, exhaust manifolds, all that type of stuff that's kind of in the way, a distributor. We're going to get all the small things, if you want to call it, out of the way. Yes, it's time consuming um, before you really get it into the nuts and bolts of the internals on this. I just want to get all the small things out of the way so I can focus on really getting inside this engine and tearing apart. Also in this part of the video is I'm going to drain the oil. I didn't do that in the first step. The reason being is I was rotating this over, making sure there was some fluid in there. Um, but I'm at a point now where I do want to drain the oil. Honestly, guys, I don't even know if it has oil in it. it probably has a little. It's probably black, tarry, who knows. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get that drained. I'm going to start taking off all these little things. And in some cases, what you're going to see is me just tossing stuff. Over there, I actually have some totes. Um, some of it is for items I know I'm not going to use, um, but I'm not going to get rid of. I'm going to go ahead and put them in there. And other items that are a bit, bul bit, a bit bulkier and bigger, I'm going to put in another tote. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to use on this engine, but I am going to keep them. Your application of what you're going to work on, if you don't know, make sure that you categorize everything. That being said, I do have bins over here. I do have my note cards and a pen. So as I take bolts off, I'm still going to be labeling those and putting them where they need to go. So if I do need them, I have them. With that, guys, let's go ahead. Let's get busy. First step being, let's get the oil out of this if it has any. See you soon. All right. Well, you know what, guys? We're going to see if this thing actually has any engine oil in it. Um, as you can see, I am looking at the bottom of the oil pan, and you can see the drain plug on that, which is right here. Sometimes these things are kind of frozen, and using a wrench and maybe like a rubber mallet um, is nice. This one's actually pretty loose, so what we're going to do is we're going to loosen that up. Like I said, I always use hand tools on this. I want to feel things on how they're actually moving. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this, see what we got. Now, mind you, there will still be some oil and sludge in this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get out what I can. I still got to take the filter off. I'll probably crank the engine over a little bit uh, by hand, of course, and just get stuff dripping off. So let's see what we got. Ooh, look at that black gold. Quite disgusting looking, actually. I'm just putting this in a bucket, um, a little bit cleaner for this application. Like I said, I do have some doggy training pads underneath this engine stand for anything that drips or getting in there. You can buy them at like Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Walmart, whatever. They're actually much cheaper than buying the actual engine pads from like O'Reilly and all that. Um, much, much cheaper and you get a whole lot more. I think the ones I buy are five, six bucks for like 36 or 72, something like that. So yeah, this isn't actually draining that much. So as that's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this over a few times. The only reason I'm doing that is I'm forcing the crankshaft and everything to move around, kind of push oil away from everything. Um, kind of one of those little handy tips. You don't technically have to do it, but I'm gonna do it anyway.
If I remember right, this was a 15 16 socket up on the crank. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and just rotate that over. Just a few rotations of it. Nothing crazy. I could actually rotate this engine over, uh, the actual on the stand a little bit, um, <laughs> to get that angle of the oil pan to drip a little bit more, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Just by looking at it, almost looks like I got about five quarts of oil in there. So yeah, that's a good thing guys. It does have oil in there. I could sit here all day long and have you watch oil drip, kind of like watching paint dry or grass to grow, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna get the oil filter off and we'll go to the next step. See you in a few. All right, well, what I ended up doing was I drained that motor oil. I let it drip for, I don't know, a good 10, 15 minutes, rotated the engine oil over, or engine over a little bit just to get any, any residual oil kind of moving and flowing towards the bottom. So what I'm gonna do real quick, Normally I wouldn't show taking an oil filter off, but I do want to explain something real quick. So as you can see here, this one wasn't very tight, which I'm not, you know, that doesn't bother me none at all. I'm kind of glad it came off easy. Try to do this without making a huge mess. As you can see, it's going to want to drip. Like I said, this can be a really dirty job. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna explain something to you. And this can kind of tell you a little bit more about what you got going on in this engine before you tear it down, if you desire to do so. So what you can do with this, as you can see, it's pretty black. If you really wanted to see what you got going on in your engine before you tear this down, you can actually cut an engine filter open. And in the webbing in there, the actual filtration part, you can look for any metal or debris, um, shiny stuff, coppery color and all that. And that might give you a better look before you tear this down on what's going on inside, see if there's any bearings loose that were worn, uh, anything like that. So, sorry, not bearing loose, bearing worn. Um, obviously, loose bearings would call it to wear. Um, but yeah, so if you really wanted to, you could actually take this filter, cut it, look at what's inside of there it'll unwind and look for anything shiny metallic copper colored anything like that any extra debris to see what's going on inside this engine before you actually tear it down that's just a quick little tip with that guys we need to get cranking on working on this engine getting all the small things off i'll be right back all right well we got the engine oil out of this we're ready to go on the next step i know it seems really tedious of tearing down an engine looks like i'm going into a whole lot of detail well i am the reason being is, well, we do show a lot on engine building, but there's always people that are new to this. I'm just trying to create a video series that kind of shows kind of what I consider the right way to tear this down and why. So the next step, what we're going to do is all, like I said at the beginning of the video, all the miscellaneous stuff we're going to start taking off. Kind of what I want to get down to is just the, head, or the heads on here, the engine block, that type of stuff, so we can take a deep dive in this engine in the next video. So what I'm gonna do is, like I said, stuff that I don't need, I'm gonna put aside, stuff that I do need, I'm gonna label, put away. I'm gonna put that in time lapse. One thing you're, you're gonna see me use, like I've said before, is hand tools. Really don't use power tools. I wanna feel the bolts to see the tension, feel if they're cross-threaded, they're almost gonna snap. Just kinda of see what has been loose on this engine and, and what's not. Sometimes if you see something that is loose, you can expect some un uncommon wear that shouldn't happen or in some cases you know what it could also cause damage so i'm just kind of thinking ahead when i do this of what do i expect what's unexpected and what i want to see so with that guys time lapse time i'm gonna get start tearing into all the small things see you in a little bit Well, as you can see, I got the intake manifold off. Um, didn't really give me much of a fight. I had to get the valve covers off to get into an area where I could, you know, pry on that a little bit. You just want to be careful. Uh, real quick, one tool I didn't mention before on this, 
Um, speed wrench comes in handy. I really like this one. Got this one on Amazon. I think Gear Wrench makes it. I don't know, 15, 20 bucks. That's not the point of this. Look at the valve train. Look how nasty and sludgy this was. It's pretty gross. Let me get you a, kind of a better shot here. That is absolutely disgusting. Um, I'm going to take a guess just by looking at this, that this engine's never been apart. Uh, probably didn't run very well for a little while. Um, this is an older engine, so it uses older, older motor oil that had tendencies to gum up like this. Um, but yeah, it's not very well properly maintained. Pretty nasty. If you also look here from this angle, you can kind of see the same thing. Pretty gross. I'm sure this engine burned a little bit of oil. Um, these are our, this is a water port. Same with there. Same with over here. Those are pretty gross. Um, you can see you got some blockage going on here, not only from an, a, a gasket, um, but you also see, well, look at that flaking stuff off there and in here. Um, so yeah, even if I was to save these heads, uh, these are definitely would be needing to be um, rebuilt. This here is actually a heat crossover. It's pretty nasty. Um, the intake ports actually don't look too terrible. But you know what, like I said before, we're not gonna reuse these heads. Um, I'm gonna go something completely different. Not sure yet, just remember, um, performance in mind is what I'm thinking. Pretty gross, guys. On to the next step.
Well, I'm going to call that a wrap for part two. A couple things here. I'm trying to do this with common hand tools for the beginner. Saw the timing cover. Last thing you saw was me heating it up. It broke. Was that a bad thing? Yes, it is. Is it a crucially bad thing? Not really. Mistakes happen. You can't let them discourage you. Was I trying to do the right thing with what I had like a beginner? Absolutely. The problem was with that, it was quite simple. There was two bolts up in here that go into the block that the heads were snapped off. Um, problem with that is, is well, it's seized on the timing cover. I heated it, let it sit, heat, let sit. But it is aluminum versus iron on that too. So it was just super corroded, guys. Um, really, if I would have done this like at Jimmy's, I would have tried to weld a nut on the end of that and get that out or use a torch. But like I said, I'm trying to do this like you would in your home garage. Um, if you didn't have tools like that, was it absolutely crucial that I broke that timing chain? If I wanted to keep it, yeah. But after I broke it, I was a little frustrated. I took a look at it and the water neck ports were all corroded. So really it wouldn't have been that good of an item to keep anyway. So you know what? While well, I tried to do the right thing, I broke it. But in the end, it's really not that bad of a thing that happened. Um, so yeah, just got to be careful. Um, everything I do, I pre-soak the bolts, let them sit, you know, usually overnight and soak them again. Um, one thing about this is, if you saw me when I was doing the exhaust manifold bolts, be super careful with those. You don't really want to break those out. Um, the problem I had was the actual heads on the, on the bolts um, were rusty and corroded. And there's a trick you can do if, if it doesn't feel like it's the right size of the socket. You know what, guys? You're not going to reuse those bolts. I guarantee it. Get one to fit, tap it on with a hammer, and be very careful. You can apply a little heat, a little, a little bit of lubricant. But overall, just be super careful. I've had pretty good luck, knock on wood, so far of getting everything off except this timing chain cover. Um, you know what, guys? It happens. You just can't get discouraged. Like I said, I'm doing this the right way. Even when you do it the right way, things are going to happen. Um, there's two bolts in here that are broke off. Going to have to drill those out and get them out. Um, this one here is stuck. Hopefully, uh, when we get everything else done, I can show you the wax and heat trick to get stuff like that free. Um, so yeah, all the accessories, all the small things, if you want to call it, all the extras, like the title of the video says, are off. Now, what are we going to do? Well, you know what, guys? It's getting a deep dive into this. We're going to get the heads off. We're going to get the cam out. We're going to get the timing chain off, crank out, everything. But as you can see, this thing is really sludgy, really nasty. Some of these spots, I can't even tell where the head bolts are. So this is going to be a part where it's going to get gross and grimy. Wear some crappy clothes. Um, you're going to have to get like a pick, screwdriver, whatever you can. Get in there and really scrape all that out to get around those head bolts. Speaking of which, look at this. You see how nasty this is? Well, look at that timing chain. That's pretty bad. So with that, guys, although I had a little bit of frustration, quite a bit of success with this. All the extras off. You know, that's a half day's worth of work, sometimes more right there. So, yeah organizing all my parts, labeling them. A lot of them I probably won't use, but I do want to know the size of those just in case. I'm still not getting rid of everything in there because I want to go through each one of those parts if I do need to replace it and have the part number on there, dimensions, whatever I need. So with that, guys, next video you're going to see is us taking a really deep dive into this Pontiac 400. Hope to see you next time. Later.